Hello, wonderful friends. Uh, welcome to Enlighten, where we talk about creative consecration through Christ. I am so, so excited um, to be able to have this discussion today. It's going to be so fun. Um, <clears throat> a lot of a lot of things are going on in my mind right now, and it's exciting, and it's um, it's really fun. I'm actually going to do a little bit of a shorter version today because I am trying to help my kids pack. They're going on a humanitarian um, trip to Peru, and as you can imagine, there's just... I have to drive into the airport in just like two hours. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not, I'm going to do this because I have to. And it's so, it feels so right. And I have so much I want to share. So like, we're doing this. Anyway, it is so exciting. And welcome everybody. Please share where you're watching from because that is seriously the best. Um, I love seeing where everybody is watching from. We have Arizona, Utah, Brazil. How cool. My husband served his mission in Fortaleza. In Brazil so what a beautiful place um, how awesome you guys North Carolina that's on my bucket list <laughs> Arkansas oh my goodness oh my goodness Arizona this is amazing you guys this is so so incredible bountiful Utah don't you just love the sound of that bountiful Utah I think it's so beautiful um, Virginia how cool this is amazing. I am so, so excited um, to share a few thoughts, you guys, today. And I actually brought two, I prayed about it as I was um, pondering, you know, what I always pray to ask Heavenly Father, what should we share? What should we talk about? And um, hello, Sao Paulo, Brazil, how fun. Wow, this is great. Um, so these are the two pieces I want to talk about today and I want to share a few thoughts about them. And again, remember, I always give these away at the end of Enlighten. I just pick randomly people from the comments. Um, I figure out how to actually save these comments on here so I can look at them after that um, later. So that's not a problem. So whatever um, you know, as you comment and share your sparks from what touched you and enlightened you, I will be sending you those at the end. So this is going to be really, really fun. Um, and boy, I feel like so much is happening lately. I don't know. I just feel like it's a faster pace of life, especially today. I think <laughs> we're just trying to help my kids get out of the door, but, um, I, I'm going to be traveling next week, so I will not be able to do a live. And that's why I was like, we're doing the live today, for sure. And I'm going to shut my window because my neighbor is mowing his lawn and I can hear his little mower. And I just want to make sure you can hear me well. That's the, the most important part, you can hear me. Okay, so um, we're talking about the talents and I wanted to share a few things um, that have been on my mind about creativity, about this parable about the talents, which is um, one of my most favorite ones. And yet I've had my moments where I felt like, holy cow, I don't want to hear that parable because I'm so like worried that I'm not using my gifts and my talents. And I would feel this like um, kind of almost pain inside of my heart is like, I'm not doing much. And I, I felt like that one guy, you know, that like buried his talent sometimes in life. And it's, you know, it's a roller coaster. And so I, I just want to ponder about a few things about this amazing story in Matthew 25. And hopefully there will be some kind of inspiration in your heart. And um, I pray for the spirit to guide us in this regard that you would feel like contributing and using your gifts and your talents and um, because as you know that's like one of my most favorite things to ever talk about that creative consecration through Christ so in Matthew 25 and um, we know it's the parable of the talents and I mean we literally could spend like hours talking about just the parable itself but I wanted to like touch bases on a few things which I thought were like so um, touching to me 
through the years. This is like a parable through the years that I've been studying and pondering. And uh, it's been, again, as I mentioned, tough sometimes because I'm like, I'm not doing much creatively. And like, I want to, I want to so much, but there's always like opposition for us to do that. So a um, few things. I love how it says that we know that um, uh, one of the servants is giving five talents and then two talents and then one talents respectively. Each of them are given. Um, I love that it says that it's giving according to their several abilities in verse 15. So Matthew 25 verse 15. And I think this is so powerful to ponder that God gives us what he knows we can accomplish. Like he gives us each um, this ability um, to be able to share with others, right? And to be able to touch their lives. And he knows exactly what we each are capable of doing. And I just think that's just so fascinating that he entrusts us with something he knows exactly whether we are able or not to accomplish. And I love in return that the reward is the same for these people. They, whatever they put effort into is being magnified in the exact same way. And I just love that. I think to ponder that, that God is so powerful and so all knowing us um, that, you know, he blesses us with this incredible light that we each have that ability to share. And then he doesn't take it back. He didn't take those talents back after they multiplied them. He didn't say, okay, great, good job. Let me take those back. You know, they are for us. They stayed with these people. And I love the admonition that he tells them, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Oh my gosh. I mean, those words are like amazing. Just enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The Lord rejoices when we use those ability according to those gifts according to our ability that he has blessed us with. It's incredible. And I, 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 that's why I brought gift of light because I just, it's this reminder that that's his light we're carrying. It is what we are doing by sharing our gifts and our talents is exactly that we are sharing his light. And that is what makes everything so powerful that we are being co-creators with him. And so often, you know, you think of co-creators, of course, we bringing children to life, right? That's, that's the most, one of the most powerful ways to do that. And I also think, um, to think about creation and creativity, um, as we create something from our abilities and from our gifts that we have. And I was thinking so much about the savior. What an incredible, creator creative teacher he is besides being a creator of the incredible world right everything he touches is just beautiful i love what um janine is saying he breathes his light and life into us that is so true and as we study his life to get to know him we see that i mean don't you think he's the most creative teacher of all time just being able to ponder his words and his scriptures that, you know, it blows my mind. Just the way he knows how to touch our hearts in the most creative and beautiful and powerful way. It's just absolutely, absolutely incredible. And I, I love that idea. I love that idea that we can continually use our gifts and use our abilities for him. And he encourages that so very much. Um, I want to share this really cute story about, I have two stories I want to share today. So the first story is so sweet. It's about the bees. I read this book and it talks about the bees and just the way the bee colony works. 
And of course, as my creative mind is thinking there, I'm like, this is so applicable to our creativity. So the story about the bees in their hive is they know at a certain time, it just like clicks with them that it's time for the queen to lay more eggs. So they all start working towards that. All the worker bees, everybody, the whole hive is like super excited, right? And they, they feed the queen the special jelly to get her all happy and lay eggs. It's time for you to lay eggs. So she does that miraculously and gets a new life to the hive. And then the most incredible thing happens after that. She, with another 10 or 20,000 bees from the hive, decide that it's time to leave. It's time to leave all those babies they've just created because the hive will take care of them. And she is going to start another hive with those other bees to keep creating. She just wasn't like settling for whatever she just did. She's like, oh, this is enough. I'm good. I'm just going to sit here for the rest of my life and I'm not going to do one more thing. I'm just not going to try something risky. Try something new. Try something I've never even thought of doing again, right? Because like, I'm a mom right now. I gave birth to my little bees. And I, my creative mind thought, this is so cool. This is so much like creativity. And I think it's the, the idea that we just keep trying. We keep reaching. We keep and she goes out with the other bees and they, they literally use like each of the bees body to like stretch themselves and measure the new hive to make sure they know how much wax to put into the hive, how to secure the hive so that she could be ready to keep laying more eggs. Um, symbolically, of course, I thought of creativity, how important it is to not be like the, like the one um, servant who buried that talent. I mean, it's just kind of crazy that he just was afraid. He was afraid of what others would think. He was afraid because he didn't know his master. He's like, you're too strict. You know, you would be, you know, he kept blaming the master. It's the master's fault, right? But he didn't do any effort to multiply that what God has given him. And, uh, um, Oh, I love this, like continually learning and sharing our talents. Oh my gosh, so, so true. And Jesus created the earth with faith. What if we considered a talent as faith and just learn to increase or multiply our faith? Oh, that's brilliant. I love that, Peggy. What an amazing thought. Absolutely. It's like, it's for him. We create for him. To, to bless others and to glorify Him. So these are just brilliant thoughts. I love that so very much. And it actually goes so well with this other story I wanted to share. So um, in Turkey, there's a saying, um, it said, Askida Ekmek. That's my little Turkish. <laughs> and it basically means that the bread is on the hook. So when you walk, it's like an ancient tradition they have. Bulgaria is very close to Turkey. That's where I grew up from in Bulgaria. I grew up there. So uh, we share the same food in many ways. And um, right now it's actually the same mission for the church, Turkey and Bulgaria and part of the same mission. So this story about this ancient story about this Turkish tradition, I think it's so inspiring. So when you walk into a local bakery, um, you would go inside, you would order your fresh bread. And if you have enough money to spare to buy another loaf of fresh bread, you would just say, put it on the hook. And then the person will charge you um, double for your bread and would put that extra piece of bread that you purchased for somebody else on the hook, right on the wall, they would just hook the bag with the bread in it. And so when somebody else would walk in and they would be um, saying, is there anything on the hook? Or they would just go and look to see if there's anything on the hook. They would just go in and take that bread graciously um, and thankfully and, and, and then keep going, right? They couldn't afford that bread that day. So it made me think like, Creativity is so much like that because we do it for others. We do it to help 
and bless others. We put ourselves sort of say on the hook, right? We're like, we're here. If anybody can take this or use it, please do. And I hope your life is blessed. Um, and I hope that like Peggy was saying that if we are magnifying our faith to do some act of kindness and we believe it's going to bless somebody else, please somebody else come and take it. It's, it's there for you. It's ready. And it's just this amazing ability. Yes. To have this true charity and think outside of ourselves and to think to, to be contributing to help and bless somebody else. And, um, yeah, it's like putting yourself on the hook. It's a fun, it's a fun, um, fun tradition they have in Turkey. And it just made me think how I am just so um, grateful for that opportunity that we have to do this. Um, creativity is for others. What a beautiful way of thinking. Oh, it's just, it's true. You guys, it's amazing because that's how God made it. And if you think, of course, of Jesus, he was constantly doing and helping others and serving and going out of his comfort zone to bless others and to help others and their efforts and to multiply their gifts and their abilities. And I absolutely love that um, so much um, for that particular reason. Um, oh, uh, this is neat. I, I, I love this. Exerting our faith in God, um, in the gifts God has already given us, helps us to have the courage to use them. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like a hundred times. Um, and I think this is so amazing. It is so amazing to be able to do this and, and rely on the Lord, rely on the Lord. I think this other guy with the talent, with the one talent that he didn't do anything. He one didn't know the Lord the way he should have. And because of that, he didn't rely on the Lord or trust them that Jesus can help him to use his gifts. And, and, you know, being idle, there's a talk by Elder Rasband that he talks about this one guy, this one servant, you know? Um, and I think this is so interesting that he's like, well, you know, he was idle. He didn't, and the Lord was not going to like comment on that. He's not going to applaud that. Yes. Be idle, be lazy and don't do anything with what you've been given. He would not do that. And so I think this is so, so interesting, um, to be able to ponder that relying and trusting that God is going to help our efforts in that regard. And, um, I like what Raquel saying that God knows exactly what we have to offer. And he also knows exactly what another needs. Ah, oh, so through uh, that's so true through the power of the Holy ghost. He can use each of us to benefit someone. I've been fed by others talents. Oh, and that's like the essence of why we are doing this why we are doing this using our, our gifts and abilities to bless others and being creative to, to bring light and goodness to other people's lives. And, um, and it is just the most amazing, the most amazing thing. Um, and it's true. We have to Debbie saying we can do the best we can at times. And that's exactly true. Like, uh, and our best is also super important. And our best is different at different times. And that is also super important. And again, going back to the same thought that God gave us these abilities and gifts that we have to use them according to what we can offer. He knows it's kind of interesting. He gave us our abilities according to our abilities. I just thought of that. It's truly with these gifts. He knows what we are capable of doing and contributing and uh, being able to build up his kingdom on the earth um, through our gifts. 
And it's so wonderful to know that we are enough. I feel that so very much that the world will bombard us. It's like, you can't do a thing. Who are you to be creating? You know, you're not a musician. You're not an artist. Who? You don't matter. These are the voice of the evil one. This is not what Jesus wants us to feel or think. He's like, I love you. Do what you can at your ability and I will bless you and multiply that effort. And I just quickly wanted to share, I had this time in my life when I just wasn't creating for like years. Like it was so, so um, hard and so difficult um, for me because I, I felt like I should be doing something and then I, I just wasn't doing anything about it. And um, this moment of like pause, you know, of not being able to create and just like nothing happening um, happened, which is so interesting. It happened right after pretty much I, um, I published this book, you guys, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's Lost in Learning, The Art of Discovery. And that's why I wanted to share this with you because it's tied up with what I want to tell you, how I had this... Um, thought in myself that like it's not happening it's not okay i'll just come to this piece because i think we all know it i just opened to it randomly but it's one of my favorite pieces because i um in this book i was actually working on photographing the renaissance this was like my main inspiration this happened like oh my gosh like 15 years ago okay so a long time ago and I wanted to photograph the Renaissance because it's been painted, sculptured, illustrated, but never actually photographed. So I went on this crusade to find these luminaries of the Renaissance, some of our favorite minds of the Renaissance. You have Galileo, you have Da Vinci, um, you have like, this is like a picture of the Mona Lisa and um, Leonardo Da Vinci, Newton, um, this is a fun one. It's Galileo Galilei looking at his own sketch of the moon. So you can kind of see this piece. And uh, I, I love the catchment in his eyes. Do you see the catchment in his eyes? I just love the little light that was in his eyes. And um, the reason this was so interesting is I felt so inspired back then, right? 15 years ago. Like I want to study these people's lives because they were the luminaries of the Renaissance. They were the ones everyone look up to, and we do now, right? They're like, it's the masters, it's these incredible people from the Renaissance. And then I, this whole idea of the book that um, was published and released out of the world was like, well, guess what? They were people, they were just ordinary people that were curious and that wanted to use their gifts and their talents. And they did exactly that, right? And so it is such an example, like for us in our day and age to look back because we are living in our modern day Renaissance. And the idea was to look into them, to look at that inspiration they can be for our own modern day Renaissance, to contribute and to write our own verses, to bring, what is our song? You know, what is our verse that we are going to bring to the world? And um, I, I just think this is um, um, such, such an amazing concept. And then, and then I did this and then I literally had seven years of like nothing. And yeah, it was just like, I was so heartbroken because I, I was talking all about creativity, right? And I was talking all about this, like, well, let's use our gifts. And I did some speaking. I went like in the fine art world and I would keep talking about that. And then in my own life, I felt like I have to do so much more and I'm not doing that. So it was really, really interesting. Um, and I think we will have those moments. And I, I so want to talk about this, that um, I think Janine is saying something beautiful too, that sometimes we need to prepare spiritually and mentally before the gift comes. Yes, that is so true. Because again, we're co-creators with God and we need his 
influence and his inspiration and his right timing for that to happen. And so looking back in my life, I, as much as I was like, so like, I need to be doing something more. I actually brought the book to my mission president and he's like, oh, this is fantastic. I'm so proud of you. This is a great book. It's awesome. But I feel like you need to create something for Jesus and there's something else you need to do. And I was like, oh, great. Thank you. That's awesome. But I honestly had no idea how, no idea the way things are going to work. And I fasted and prayed and just had this like, it's not happening right now. And it's interesting because we really have to rely on the Lord. And looking back, I'm like thinking this was so, I am a homeschooling mom. My husband and I homeschooled all three kids. And I'm like, if I had done anything back then, I know I would have not been able to homeschool my children. And my sweet parents, we have like a two family house. So they were living right next to us. I wouldn't have been able to give my time to them. And my um, ability to spend this quality year, years of just sharing that love and experiences with them. And so it's just kind of amazing seeing the bigger picture and really trusting God and his timing because um, it is like a huge part of um, being able to use those gifts for his good through his inspiration. And I love that I still had deep feeling inside of me to just there's something still coming. So don't give up, you know, just keep keep that in your heart. And and things are going to happen. Things are going to work out because you need to rely on me. That's how they're going to work out because you need to trust me. God was like, trust me. I will guide you. I will help you. I was holding on with my heart and mind to that faith, right? For that faith to just trust him um, for that for that moment when these things will be happening and they will um, in our lives. And um, so I think... I think the admonition is to not worry what the world would think. Um, creating could be very chaotic. It could be like, it's sometimes very messy too and crazy. And um, life is like that. And having the desire to do it and knowing we're doing it for God um, changes everything, you know, and gives us that extra push that we can actually accomplish that. And I brought this piece, Epiphany, uh, for that for that reason. And um, I wanted, I actually, I found this typewriter in an antique bookshop. And they had, there were mostly books, but then they had these cute little antique things that go with books and with writing. And um, it was really, really, really fun to do that. Um, and... Um, oh, I have to read this comment because I love it so much. Um, what better teacher than the creator? I think we must remember the source of our creative, creative side is found in the source of the creator. What better teacher than the creator? He knows me and I trust him to take my hand and inspire me. Amen to that. Wow, thank you. That is so beautiful. And I hope this piece actually accentuates exactly what you just said so beautifully that we want to act upon the inspiration that um, God is going to give us. And we want to, to maybe start today. Why not? Maybe start today asking God, like, what can I do? What do you want me, my special abilities that I have in my heart to do? The epiphany, the idea that will come to us, the inspiration that will come to us um, is absolutely incredible that we can rely on him to guide us in that regard and to open ways that we've never even thought before possible. I honestly never thought that I'd be creating art in, in color. I was working as a fine art photographer for 15 years in black and white. I'm trained in black and white, dark room, completely different world. Now I'm doing, I'm making photo paintings and I'm learning so much every day and completely am relying on the Lord because I am so like not knowing what I'm doing. Like, honestly, I'm just completely 
I am relying on the Lord because nothing happens without His light, without His inspiration, and without realizing that we're doing His will. And whether that's in a note we're about to send to a friend that we feel the inspiration to do that, whether it's a note, uh, an inspiration of how to rearrange like the furniture in our house so that the spirit can feel good. And you can, when someone walks in and you, when you walk in, you would feel this feels really good. You just use your creativity and creative gifts to do that. Um, there's just so many we can talk about like all day long. And I'm eventually, I'm actually hoping to do like a creative workshop where I really want to go beyond this. So how do we actually do this? Like, how do we actually work on our creativity and develop that? I think that would be really fun. We did a, we did a sort of part two to, uh, and a creative talk I usually give in New Zealand with the youth. I actually did, I gave my fireside and we did a wonderful time talking and then they had their questions and we jumped into part two. So how do we actually do that? How do you do that personally in your life? Um, and it was such an amazing experience because they just came up with so many ideas and, and they're like, I didn't think of that. I think I'm creative in that way, you know, and what's stopping me from being creative that way, realizing all the things that are trying to stop us and distract us and prevent us from that. So it was, it was really neat. But anyway, I just hope that, um, the idea inside about being creative and sharing our gifts for God and to bless others, hopefully sparked inside of you. Hopefully there's, um, I like what Janine's saying. He's the wind beneath my wings. Yes, literally he is. And he can help us and enlighten us in that sense. How do we do that? How do we bring what's uniquely others? to bless others people's lives. And it is an amazing process that um, Elder Uchtdorf says that when we are creative, we bring deep satisfaction and joy into our hearts. And that's exactly true. Like being able to do that, um, it brings so much joy into our hearts and souls. So I will, um, I will put these two pieces on my story for a little reminder today. And then I'll put some of the, I will put the um, Matthew 25, I'll put the story up if you want to read the story about the talents. And um, if anything else I can think of, I'll put it up there. But thank you so much, friends, for today. Thank you for being here. I am just going to take my kids to the airport for their HXP trip and like pretty soon right now. So. I am so excited we could talk about this and thank you for your beautiful comments, everyone. Seriously, you are the bestest. <laughs> um, and I know that's not grammatically correct, but I just love that because you are the bestest. <laughs> and um, I will be, I'm going to do a post next Wednesday because I will be traveling and um, then I will see you the, the Wednesday after that. We have a wonderful guest that will join us. It will be June 7th um, that she's going to be with us here on Enlighten, which is going to be so, so fun. And um, meanwhile, I hope you create something in your life. Like start today. Ask the Lord, like, what should I be creating? What should I do? And there's many things we can create, many ways that we can bless others and glorify God. So um, thank you for your love and your amazing light. You are wonderful. And as we always say, carpe diem. And we will talk soon. Um, we will talk two weeks from now. But I will do, I'll definitely do a post next Wednesday um, as a little substitute for Enlighten because of all the fun stuff that's happening. So you're the best. Keep sharing your light and um, keep glorifying God because He is the greatest. And you are amazing and you have an incredible light in you and potential to every day, daily, bring that light to others. So thank you for bringing light to my life. I just think you're the bestest and I love you. Mwah. We'll talk soon. Carpe diem. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.